The Hubble telescope works like a time machine. The starlight it sees has taken millions, sometimes billions of years to reach us. The events themselves happened before man had even evolved. The deeper into space Hubble searches, the further back in time it travels, and the fainter the stars and galaxies appear. This poses a big question. Just how far back can Hubble see? Dr. Henry Ferguson's team decided to find out. These galaxies that we're seeing at the far distant reaches of the universe are, are very, very faint. And some of the faintest ones that we're seeing, we're seeing about one photon per week striking the human eye. So there's very, very few photons of light reaching us. And it just takes a lot of effort to collect that much light. There's no chance of seeing these galaxies in the night sky. Even Hubble struggles to pick out their dim light. To overcome the challenge, the team develops an innovative use for the space telescope. It's called a deep field, and it works just like photographing stars in the city. Taking the Hubble deep field is very much like trying to take a time exposure with a, with a normal camera. You could just click the shutter and you wouldn't see anything because you haven't let light get in for very long. If you want more light, you probably need more time. When you leave the camera's shutter open for a whole minute, it can collect and build the faint starlight into an image. Now, if you do that in a city, with lots of bright lights around you, in the final image you might see a few dozen stars. If you get out to a cold mountain top, you'll see a lot of stars. And if you do it with a big telescope, you'll start to see distant galaxies. The deep field plan is inventive but risky. Over a week of Hubble's highly sought after time will be spent taking images of one blank, boring spot in the sky. The team picks a dark area with no bright nearby stars. They have to avoid anything that would mask the dim light coming from distant galaxies. But no one really knows what they're going to find out there. There was a very much a sense of fishing with, with the Hubble Deep Field. It's just not obvious what you're going to find. Over 10 days, Hubble takes more than 300 images of a single spot in the sky. Each only captures minute traces of light. But layer one on top of another, and empty space soon fills up. On one snowy morning when the, the people were able to finally gather around a computer screen and put up the images, that was extremely exciting. It might not be one of Hubble's prettiest pictures, but its contents make it one of the most mind-blowing. The slice of sky that you're seeing in the Hubble Deep Field is about the size of a grain of sand held at arm's length. It's this tiny, tiny spot on the sky. And yet when you blow that up with a telescope like Hubble, there are 3,000 galaxies in that tiny grain of sand. Each galaxy has anywhere from a billion to 100 billion stars in it. Every slither of the sky contains this vast profusion of early galaxies. They're nothing like our own galaxy, yet cosmologists believe that they eventually combined to produce galaxies like our Milky Way. Subsequent deep field surveys probe even further back. The deepest so far is the ultra deep field. It combines 800 individual shots onto one image. Twice as many as the original deep field. Its final image reveals the universe's oldest stars, 13 billion light years from Earth, about two billion further than the first deep field. Ancient stars like these forged the matter that makes up Earth and us humans. But Hubble's most startling data finally allows us to close in on the event that created all matter in the universe, the Big Bang. Ever since that titanic explosion, all the structures and galaxies of the universe have been flying apart. Measure how fast, and you can track back to the moment the universe began. 
This was scientist Edwin Hubble's dream back in the 1930s. Now Wendy Friedman can get precise results using the telescope named in his honour. She measures the distances by studying one particular type of star called Cepheids. All Cepheid stars have standard brightness like street lamps. And like a string of street lamps, those which are close to us look bright. And those further away look dim. By measuring the brightness of a Cepheid star, you can calculate how far away it is. Friedman's team measures the brightness of 800 separate stars. She then calculates their relative speed and position. The results confirm that the universe is expanding. The galaxies are flying apart from one another. But if Friedman then plays this motion in reverse, she can calculate when all of the galaxies started out in one concentrated spot. An event we call the Big Bang. Before the Hubble Space Telescope, we didn't know whether the universe was 10 billion years old or whether it was 20 billion years old. There was a factor of two discrepancy, and when you think of that, that's huge. The Hubble's accuracy has allowed Friedman to calculate the date of the Big Bang. Time, the universe, and everything in it exploded into existence 13.7 billion years ago. In terms of our understanding these questions of the expansion of the universe and its composition, the Hubble Space Telescope has been probably the most powerful tool we have ever had access to. In dating the Big Bang, Hubble has achieved its greatest goal, 